Hi everyone! This is the next video and I guess a two-part video series showing how I build my tileable production planet setup. Uh, preceding this video there have been a showcase video that goes over what my setup is and how I use it. And then just directly before this I showed you how to build this furnace array right here, uh, which is extendable and tileable all the way around the planet at a specific uh, range of latitudes. So there's another part that kind of adds on to this and fills up the rest of the space between the equatorial power band that I use and the uh, smelting array here. And it has to do with logistic stations. Mostly what it is, is it's a way to place and stack assemblers. And essentially it also is completely tileable all the way around the globe for this area right here. And it will fit exactly 90 assemblers. Uh, you can also opt to replace the assemblers with chemical facilities or even smelters, whatever you need. Uh, so let me show you how to build it. So for starters here, we're going to be using planetary logistic stations instead of interplanetary logistic stations. The reason for this is because you can actually fit these closer together, which means that you're going to have both more drones in the air, more places to put drones, uh, and you'll have a greater density of outputs. So the way that I like to do this is it's going to be lined up on the outer sections here. So there's going to be one column of planetary logistic stations here and another column right here. And uh, once again, these are going to be uh, falling on the contiguous lines of longitude that is where one line of longitude goes all the way down the planet uh, without any breaks between the latitudes. So the way that I place these is kind of alternating by, uh, by 15 tiles. So we start here. We would place one directly in the center here of this, of this crossing, directly beneath the substation. And the idea is that from here we would stagger it uh, by every 15 tiles. So the next one would go here. So instead of in the middle, it goes on the main intersection and then in the middle and then on the main intersection and it'll actually be able to fit exactly five here between this and the equatorial power band that i use uh, but for this instance we're just going to concentrate on probably just doing two here just to show you how it works so we've got one in the middle one right on the money and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so down by five then down by 15. So here's kind of the initial structure for how we're going to do this. Now we want to fit exactly 10 assemblers in between here. I'm going to be using assembler level 1s because I've got that's what I've got on me right now. Uh, I'm trying to get the fiber production up and running on this planet. These guys right here are a little bit of a pain. And I've not gotten that done yet, so we're just going to be using that. But the setup is intended to work with assembling machine mark 3s. Now I'll tell you why. Uh, there's going to be exactly 10 that fit in here, and I'm going to quickly show you uh, how the spacing works for that. So from this side, uh, from either side rather, you're going to have essentially two tiles here that are going to be your belt routing to and from the planetary logistics station. Now at this high of a latitude, because of placement order uh, and the closeness of the tiles, you generally want to place these down first. Uh, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. But what we're going to do is from those two tiles, we're going to center this machine on the uh, the main grid line here and we're going to be able to place as you'll see four five six seven eight nine ten now here's the uh, the issue with doing this like this as you can see if you play if you place the machine down before you place the rest of the belts down you cannot actually place a belt however that is just a lie if you place the belts beforehand and then place the assembler you will be good to go, everything will function normally. Note that as you get farther down towards the equator, uh, the spacing opens up and you don't need to do this placement order, but uh, for the first couple of rows here, this is necessary. So we've got exactly 10 here, and let's, let's go over why that's the case. So exactly 10 means that with Mark III, we have, a, well, let's just give an example, right? So circuits, for example, circuits are the most demanding component in terms of input and output rates. So it requires two iron every second, and it makes two circuits every second. So it has an input of two per second and an output of two per second. Now, when we factor in the fact that we're using, oh, thank you, autosave. When you factor in the fact that we're using uh, assembling machine mark threes, you get a production speed of 1.5, which increase, increases both uh, consumption and production. So if we take those figures of two per second, multiplied by 1.5, all of a sudden what we get is three per second. So each one of these machines making circuits would be consuming three iron per second and would be producing three circuits per second. Now, if we've got 10 assemblers, what that means is that if they're all doing that same recipe, we've, we're consuming and producing three times 10 or 30 per second, which happens to be the maximum capacity of a Mark III belt. 
So the idea is that this is the, the main constraint. There is no other item currently in the game that requires or produces more than three items per second of any individual type that is. So based on that, this setup can be copied and will work for pretty much any of the recipes. Now, the idea is that because this is a modular design, obviously a single row of production for things that are crafted fairly slowly is not going to suffice. But because it's so nicely tileable, basically the goal is that you just continue placing these modules as you need them. And from there, that will form the basis of actually making a factory that can produce things in a reasonable quantity. Uh, so let's quickly go over how I would do inputs and outputs. Let's just say for a second that we are going to, in fact, make circuits like we said. So the way that I generally like to have this flow is I like to have the inputs on the right side and the outputs on the left side. Now, you know that in general, for most of the recipes, there's going to be more inputs than outputs. And that's pretty typical. And at some point, if you start getting a lot of machines that are going to require three inputs or, you know, multiple outputs, you might become kind of pressed for belt space. So there is an art to this. It's not completely figured out in all cases. There are going to be some instances where you need to be clever about how you do your routing, which modules you put next to each other and stuff like that. And when we're done here, I'll show you uh, the way that my setup is currently going using this setup. So what I like to do, like I said, is I like to put the um, the inputs coming in from uh, essentially the far side here, looking top from, from the pole to the equator that would be on the right. Uh, but we're going to be building like this, so it's going to, for us, be on the left side of the screen. Uh, so like I said, I like to have the inputs on this side and the outputs on this side. So what I'm going to quickly do here is just show you how I route these belts. And the way that I like to do this is I like to have the, the closer belt come from the, the middle input and the far belt come from the farther inputs. Uh, the nice thing about this is that if you need, you can also get three outputs this way. Obviously, if you remove this machine, you can place the belts down. Um, but doing something like this, having it bend out this way. Uh, now, another thing to note is that this is just one row of assemblers. I like to have each pair of um, planetary logistics stations support two rows. So we're actually going to be building another road down here, and both of these are going to support that one. Uh, so from here, we've kind of got our belt, belts run. I'm not going to bother placing the, the sorters here. I just want to show you kind of the belt routing logic. And then we're going to do the same kind of thing over here. We're going to send this up this way. Uh, and then if we you know don't have this machine placed, then we would send it up like this and obviously you would set the filters on these logistics stations as you need them but then that's kind of how you would do it now when it comes to power obviously um, in general you can place uh, power poles in between them but like i said at these high latitudes it's not actually the same even though it's the same grid it's not the, the same grid spacing which is kind of an interesting nuance about this game uh, so up here you're going to need to make choices about where you place your power poles. So the nice thing is that because the satellite substations reach so far down, uh, by the time that you're seriously worried about, uh, we'll just do this for example, by the time that you're seriously worried um, that you won't be able to get power, you'll, you'll be able to start placing them in the center again. Uh, that's not what I chose to do um, over when, I'll, when I'm about to show you what I've been building. Um, but one of the other really nice things about this design is the substation stretch down far enough such that you can place them in the window when you need. You might maybe miss one or two sorters based on how you lay out your setup, but that should be uh, easy, easily reconcilable. So now let's talk about placement of the second one. Now, unfortunately, because we've chosen to go 15 tiles here, uh, that means that we're going to be operating with a number that does not allow us to have a perfect center here because uh, 15 tiles is actually 16 placement points. That's one of the interesting things about this game uh, is that the tiles that you see here, the squares, are not actually how things are placed. They're placed on the, the, the intersections. So even though we've got an odd number and we should be able to find a center, uh, we, we can't actually find a center here because we've got six, so there is no way to, to place that perfectly. So the way that I like to do this is I generally like to shift it up towards the top and then shift it down as needed. Obviously, if you had a third input, that might go here, that might go here, that will affect where you choose to place your inputs and outputs. But in general, the template that I like to use is two inputs and one output. And I do that in exactly the same way. I start on the top line here, and I go down on the bottom line here. So I basically take this uh, six tile, or this five tile, six placement slot gap, and have this be where my next assemblers go. Uh, and obviously that means that I can add or subtract belts either on top or on the bottom based on my needs. 
So in this instance, what I generally like to do is I like to place them on the top. And let's say that we wanted uh, another run of circuits. We can just go ahead and place those down right here. Forgive my placement speed here. And then you can do just much of the same thing. You grab these inputs right here. You can just drag them in this way. The bots would want to cooperate with me. And then you can just kind of stick it on in this way. Now, fun thing about this, you can either uh, route it up into this input right here, or you can just stick it over and do that. Uh, I tend to go either way. I like to keep things consolidated, so a lot of times what I like to do is I like to um, do it this way. Might save a couple of belts. Not really an issue either way. Um, but there you go. And you, you kind of just continue doing this down as you need it. Uh, you can swap machines out. And let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, what I've built up so far. Obviously, the sun is not going to be cooperating with us. We are in desperate need of lights in this game. Oh, it is! Look at that! That's a pleasant surprise. But here, here's a little bit of an overview of the way that I've chosen to implement this. You can see that, uh, you know, based on my power grid, I've still got a, a nice grid going on here. Uh, but this is kind of what I've set up, and you can see how this kind of works, is that we've got uh, input to output, input to output, and then you can vary what you're making. And the nice thing is that when you do this in general, what you'll have is all of the slots filled on all of the stations that you, that you use. So I'll just give you a little bit of time uh, to pause and look at this. Obviously, you can pause the video if you wish, but I'm going to keep on talking. Um, we've got some, kind of a production setup here. And one of the most important things to note about this setup is the way that it can be optimized, right? So you see that if we kind of take the bird's eye view here, just, just even on this little section, these two runs right here, you can see that a more majority of the things that I'm using are taking iron and copper. And then over here, I'm directly using the things that are made from that. So there's, like I said, there's an art to not only routing the belts in the setup, but also choosing where and how you put your production setups. So, you know, perhaps when you start heavily creating something that requires, you know, silicon, you have your silicon smelting array right there. Uh, for example, you know, my prisms are being made here but my glass is being made all the way over here. That's probably not a wise choice, and that's something that I could easily go back and change if I so pleased. Um, but there's a lot of optimi optimizations here that can be done uh, to specifically increase the drone throughput. Uh, so you can reduce transport times, and obviously as you continue researching, that will improve implicitly, uh, but the layout has a lot to do with it, and you can actually further optimize it from there. Uh, but I want to show you a little bit of some of the situations where it gets a little more hairy with regards to belt routing. You can see that you can also drop uh, five chemical plants in, in a single row, and have it work very nicely. I do that in several places. Uh, for example, here is one of those places where I've got a ton of different things that are being made, um, and it requires a ton of belts. For example, the, uh, the titanium glass here, you can see that I kind of get pressed for belt space, but I've got plenty of gaps here where I can move that, I can shift it around, there's plenty of expandability uh, built into the setup, which is one of the things that I like about it. So that is a general overview uh, at this point of the, the two theories behind the way that I do both my smelting arrays and my, uh, my assemblers. I have not had much time to play the game recently, so I'm not particularly sure as to what content you might be able to expect next out of me, but as always, I greatly appreciate your viewership. I hope you found this interesting at the very least, and uh, let me know if you find something in the comments. Uh, or, sorry, say something in the comments if you find something uh, that you want to chat about. Uh, but that's all I've got for now, so thank you very much.